And it shows to President Muhammad Ruari's commitment to this project and to the project of power, clean energy to Nigerians. I assure you that by the end of the, the, the this year, we should be able to commission the other three projects and put in 700 megawatt of energy to the great national grid for Nigerian public. I have to commend uh, the federal government for this project. We believe uh, tremendously we are going to benefit out of this project. The Peru Hydroelectric Power Project is engaging 6,000 skilled and unskilled workers from Nigeria in line with local content policy. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. And still on Poir, barely one week after the presidential directive to the power minister, Abu Bakr Ali, to fix the current power outage across the country. The federal government delegation is in Germany to engage Siemens Energy to fast-track implementation of transmission, rehabilitation and expansion programs. As records show that the current transmission capacity stands at 7,600 megawatts, leaving thousands of megawatts generated stranded. Federal government moved in and signed agreement with Siemens to upgrade and expand the transmission infrastructure with a target to wield 25,000 megawatts of electricity by 2025. The project being implemented under the Presidential Power Initiative is also to acquire mobile substations and transformers to boost electricity supply and stabilize the grid. Federal government is worried with the current see that uh, uh, doing something. We start showing Nigerians yes. that mm -hmm. this is what is. Mm -hmm. The delegation inspects plants where mobile substations and transformers are being manufactured as the power minister calls for quick delivery of the infrastructure. The minister's engagement in Germany is on the sideline of Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue. Joshua Ojito. NTA News. Let's now talk education as 91 beneficiaries of the MTN Foundation Scholarship have been presented with certificates in Abuja with the Morty National Organization pledging sustained investment in education through its corporate social responsibilities. Kunle Adiyeye reports. It is an initiative many consider even brighter than yellow. The MTN Foundation began in 2004 with the scope widened scholarship for science, technology, engineering and mathematics and scholarship for the blind were incorporated in 2009 and 2011 respectively with more than 4,200 beneficiaries. With the presentation of these certificates, each beneficiary will in turn receive 200,000 Naira. It is a helping hand, sensitive in its outlook, with good wishes to follow them everywhere they go. Joy Usman is a 300 level student in the Department of Architecture, University of Science and Technology, MENA. Joy says the benefits are immeasurable, while Sufyan Mustafa Yakubu, who is a 300 level sociology student, in Namudu Bello University, Zaria is confident he can rub shoulders with anyone despite being visually impaired. I'm planning on um, improving my skills like on some rendering software. So I'm going to use the money to like get courses on those softwares. Through the MTN scholarship, I was able to learn two languages like English and Arabic language. And I was also to uh, acquire my desire, my ambition to become a computer programmer. With 18 years in this humanitarian service, MTN says it remains committed, even more energized over the scheme. We have a vision of a future that we create, and we take an active, we're active participants in creating that future, and that is what has brought us here, you know, today. For us, the belief in the brilliance of our students. It's something we've done uh, for a number of years right now, and it's something in which we're committed to keep on doing. The next set of its beneficiaries will be unveiled in Lagos and Oweri subsequently in Abuja, Kunle, Adeyeye, NTA News. So we'll pause here in Abuja and let Hingino take it up from Lagos. Hingino, it's over to you. Thank you, Iere. National leader of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, has called off this year's colloquium meant to commemorate his 70th birthday. This, he said, is born out of concern for victims of train attack in Kaduna. Musa Toliet has details. 
and by the governor of Lagos State, Babaji De Sawolu, another dignitary in attendance, Ashiwajibola Metinubu took to the podium and announced the cancellation of the colloquium. People were killed and bombed on the train between Kaduna and Abuja to be here celebrating, dancing, and enjoying myself doesn't so enough concern of a state man. The Ashwajibala Metinubu Colloquium, which is starting in series, was meant to examine emerging global development issues and importance of good governance for Nigeria. In Lagos, Musa Tonya, NTA News. As a crucial element in a democratic mix, political parties must constantly reinvent themselves well enough to move the system of participatory governance forward. How to enhance their capacity in this direction is the objective of a three-day retreat organized by the political parties' leadership and policy center, an arm of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies in Lagos, KND Adebisi reports. Political parties represent one of the pillars of a democratic system as they provide platforms for eligible citizens to come together with all the like minds for the purpose of vying for elective positions. This retreat, organized for the Inter-Party Adversary Council, hopes to achieve a level playing ground for political parties, which, irrespective of their ideologies, will be better positioned to drive the attainment of true democracy in the country. We hope that with this retreat, the Interparty and Rashi Council will be able to go back and advise their party members on the best conduct they can put forward, what we call best global practices to ensure that Nigeria in 2023 runs an election that is rank up free. With the 2023 general election already commanding national attention, the retreat, according to the national chairman of the Inter-Party Adversary Council, IPAC, Yaba Gisani, is well-timed to deliver both the right framework and proper frame of mind for political actors. We are going to do things following due process and Nigerians will begin to now appreciate democracy. A platform for INEC and political parties to have a shared understanding and have dialogue, you know, and strategic engagement about how to promote a healthy democracy in Nigeria. It is believed that at the end of the robust engagement with other stakeholders, political parties will be better equipped for the forthcoming general elections. In Lagos, Kendi, ADBC, and T News. Simplifying global supply chain beyond the 650,000 two-foot equivalent units the EU's handled in 2021 is inducing smarter and digital process at the APM terminal in Apapa, Lagos. To translate this initiative into reduced cargo downtime, a new smart office building has been inaugurated by the organization as part of its $438 million investment in port development in Nigeria. Michael Olale reports. Here lies the largest container terminal in Nigeria, and within 50 years, the APM terminal has handled 8.1 million TEUs. This chart chronicles the rapid and reformative role of APM terminal to global trade, and the structure standing tall depicts a new direction in service delivery. Thank you very much. Behind the blocks and bricks, a more revealing reality. From the training center, conference rooms, and relaxation sports, a demonstration of the renewed determination to set an unbeatable benchmark in the logistics value chain. To do really efficient and world-class operation, you need a really good people, and really good people need an environment where they can thrive and, uh, and, and develop. Of all the offices and desks within the structure, this particular operational center stands out. Apart from injecting a smarter and digital approach to cargo delivery and evacuation, the center will help to reduce downtime, affecting productivity for truckers and customers. And the point here is when you visualize and put it on, on the wall, then you get better at 
combining all your information to serve the customers? We have a, a simulator where we can simulate both uh, ship to shore cranes, we can simulate mobile how cranes and the RTGs you see here in the yard. That enables us to first and foremost train new operators to come in. Going forward, the terminal is also thinking of expanding infrastructure, strengthening its existing automation while enhancing 24 hours clearing procedures. Uh, we believe uh, that the collaboration between the authority and you, uh, APMT, uh, will strengthen the possibilities for uh, Nigerian exporters. This initiative no doubt ensures that cargoes are delivered at a click. While the organization made a commitment to fast track the decarbonization process. In Lagos, Michael Alaleye, NT News. Time for our second break, but before then, do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. <laughs> Oh, I see this collab of wearing a suit there. No, stop. Yeah, give me small new number now. Uh, romance without finance now, annoyance. Better give me bullet. Eh? Yeah, give me the number. Oh, yeah, drop the number down. 0805. <laughs> huh? Where the complete number? It's always so hot, like the place I go need juice, so just like juicy. Hey, where are the last numbers? My five password. Four and a you only. <laughs> oh, yeah, 7650. What's <laughs> you? Make your first. Choose a social data bundle that suits your style. Dial star triple seven hash. Unlimited. The judges of Nigerian Idol season seven already. The stage is set, and now it's time for you to impress. Nigerian Idol season seven, showing every Sunday on Africa Magic Urban and Family, proudly sponsored by Vicky Drinks, Nigeria's favorite, and Binance Exchange the World. Glad to have you back. President Muhammad Buhari joins Nigeria Bar Association and National Judicial Council in celebrating with Ulufalake Sholanke, first female senior advocate of Nigeria and distinguished lady of many firsts on her 90th birthday. The president shares the auspicious and historic occasion with Chief Sholanke, rejoicing with family, friends and professional associates as they honor the renowned matriarch of the bar whose pedigree of virtue and excellence continues to awe and inspire within the outside, within and outside the legal profession. President Buhari prays that the almighty God will sustain Chief Sholanke in good health, grace and wisdom. In other news, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Mogunu, has advised security agencies in Africa to upscale their efforts in counter-resurgency and transborder crimes if the continent must stop the rising cases of military coups. He gave the advice in Accra, Ghana, at a lecture at the Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College entitled The State of Security in West Africa, Curbing the Spread of Terrorism and Preventing Coup Contagion to members of the armed forces and students. He underscores the importance of countering terrorism, violent extremism, transnational organized crime, climate change, cyber threats, porous borders, and sea piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. The National Security Advisor, who met with the top rank of the Ghanaian military, conveyed the appreciation of President Muhammad Buhari to the Ghanaian Minister of National Security for his visit to Nigeria.
in October 2021. A Togolese, Gilbert Hongbo, has beaten four other contestants across the globe to emerge as the 11th Director General of the International Labour Organization, ILO, for a term of five years. It is the first time an African will be elected into the world governing body of work. Hongbo was elected by the ILO's governing body comprising representatives of governments, workers and employers during their meeting in Geneva. Nigeria's Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngege, led the African lobby for Hongbo when no clear winner emerged in the first voting round, especially to reciprocate a favour done Nigeria in 2017 when Togo backed out of a francophone gang up in Algiers to support Nigeria for the governing body of the ILO. Hongbo is to assume office in October 2022. And it's time to talk business. Benny Adams is here. Benny. Thank you, Yere, and welcome to business. We'll start by telling you that the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says it receives and addresses more than 100 complaints daily with banking, telecoms, and aviation sectors having the most complaints. This, the commission say, reflects low consumer rights awareness Hence, the partnership with the media for consumers to be aware that someone is doing something to protect their rights to quality service delivery. You can also go to either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store um, to download uh, the app for filing the complaint. It will do the same thing in response. And there's a way to monitor it. There's a way to engage us on that. Are we resolving all the complaints yet? No. But are we resolving far more complaints? Yes. And for us as media, I think uh, it's also our responsibility to make people understand that um, they have a right to ask questions, not just asking questions. If you're not satisfied with whatever services it is that you have received from a particular provider, there is an organization that has the mandate to protect you. And ahead of deadline for submission of national trade policy draft schedule for May 2022, Muhammad Ali reports that critical stakeholders in trade and investment have commenced engagement in Kano towards achieving a more effective and competitive policy that will be consistent with international best practices. So by the time we have a coordinated uh, approach to investment, we believe, we are, we are confident that we will attract more investment. That is the investment that will meet not only the profit expectations of investors, but also the developmental aspirations of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and help us achieve the diversification of our economy that we have long been gunning for. And on the capital markets, investors lost 27.36 billion naira as the all share index dipped by 0.11%, maintains negative posture with equities closing at 46,843.9 basis points. Market capitalization maintained a negative posture at 25.24 trillion naira. 214.3 shares valued at 1.7 billion naira were traded in 4,125 deals. Chams, Transcab and FBNH were the most active to boost market turnover. Well, that is business news. Network news continues with Kemi Enibadon. Kemi, you can take it from here. Thank you, Benny, and welcome to Ibadan. Ahead of 2023 general elections, networking, mentorship, and support for one another are key to the actualization of women inclusiveness in governance, as well as attainment of the 35% affirmative action in Nigeria. This was a consensus of the 2022 Women's History Month Forum in Nibadoyo State. Funke Bidamiton reports that it was a convergence of women of substance, including wife of the state governor, Tamano Minini Makinde. Tagged gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow, speaker after speaker highlighted the potential of women in nation building. Keynote speaker and first female professor of computer science in Nigeria, Adenike Oshofison, wrapped up the gender discourse with an appeal for proactive, deliberate steps by women for emancipation. 
And not stay with those things about it in the Lord of God. Yes, we do. But what we can do for ourselves is much more than what all those things can do for us. We think this message when we talk about supporting to women, bring them up, share your knowledge and expertise. Wife of the Oyo State Governor could not agree less, challenging women to preach the gospel of gender equality in words and action. She highlighted the efforts of her office in prevention of violence against women and girls, thereby promoting a healthier society. You can agree with me that girl child education, women empowerment. A woman participating in government cannot be over Powered by Initiative for Information, Arts and Culture Development, IECD, and the American Kona Ibadan. Deserving women were recognized for exemplary leadership roles and being worthy role models for women. Women in History Month is celebrated in the month of March every year. <laughs> That's it from Ibadan. More reports with Ieri in Abuja after the break. 2023 elections draw near. Remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them? not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. No. Building and maintenance of the National Vehicle Registry requires enhanced working relationship between the Mayo Licensing Officers and the Federal Road Safety Corps National Vehicle Inspection System. Corps Marshal Federal Road Safety Corps Boboye Oyemi emphasized this at the two-day workshop for state directors, Mayo Licensing Authorities and National Vehicle Inspection System Desk Officers in Nigeria. Oyemi Ajayi has details. Data is one important tool for national security. However, in Nigeria, data duplication has hampered proper profiling. The National Vehicle and Driver's License Database, hosted by the Federal Safety Corps, has not just helped in the harmonization of data management in Nigeria, but has assisted various security agencies during investigation of crimes. The Corps Marshal, Boboye Oyeyemi, represented by the Deputy Corps Marshal Administration and Human Resources, said that the importance of a central database in the country cannot be overemphasized. The inadequacy in the database is not connected with the individual and various perceptions about maintaining an all-inclusive and truly robust national database. Investigation of this workshop was organized by the Federal Safety Corps in collaboration with the Joint Task Board to enhance capacity and competence of operations of national vehicle inspection systems to address issues affecting vehicle data collation, uploading, and effective national driver's license distribution. You can name up to nine agencies that are issuing out identification uh, number to individuals. In all of this, we haven't got a central point. With the theme, motor vehicle registration data management, a veritable tool for improved national planning and security. The Corps Marshal reiterates the need for uniformity in the licensing system in the country and build a robust national database to aid economic and national security planning. In Abuja, Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. And on sports, painfully, Nigeria this evening failed to qualify for the Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup following a 1-1 draw with the Black Stars of Ghana at the Moshud Abiola Stadium, Abuja. Now time to take a quick peep at the weather outlook for Wednesday.
Glad to have you on Wednesday's Wide Focus. We are going to have some respite in those haze conditions in good visibility. Though temperatures will be as high as 35 to 40 degrees Celsius over the northern region and part of north central region. We expect those haze conditions in good visibility over the northern region while the north central down to the coastal belt of the country will be partly cloudy to cloudy condition as we progress into afternoon evening period localized thunderstorms are likely over the coastal belt of the country part of the inland cities of the south will experience localized thunderstorms benway kogi and kwara will have slim prospects of thunderstorms activities in the afternoon evening period while the remaining region in the north will be in slight hazy condition. Thank you for watching and bye for now. And that concludes NTA Network News tonight. Many thanks for watching and please remember that rape is a crime. Speak up and take action. I'm Ian Ray John. Have a good night.